Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're gonna to be reviewing Stitchy in Tookie Trouble for your Nintendo Switch. Now this is a 2D platformer heavily inspired by the Donkey Kong Country series. And it's just launched on the eShop for a price of only $12.99. Now, does this platformer honor its inspiration or is it just a cheap knockoff? Well, we'll try to answer that today. Now, don't forget as we move through this video, if you do like what you're seeing and you want to see more, don't forget to hit that like button. It's the best way to support the channel and also subscribe if you aren't already. Now, just to get started, when we say that this game is inspired by Donkey Kong Country, I mean it is heavily inspired. Not only by the basic mechanics of the game, but even the storyline itself starts out like a familiar storyline in one of the recent Donkey Kong Countries. You basically play as a scarecrow who gets all his corn stolen by the mysterious Tukis, and you set out on an adventure to get your corn back. Now your adventure is going to bring you through three different overworlds. One basically is a tropical zone, a second is a frozen zone, and finally you finish once again in a mechanical factory zone. Does that sound familiar? It does to me. And just like its inspiration, that's about all we get storyline wise. I'll let you know, however, if you pay attention to the locales by the design itself, you get a pretty good idea of why the Tukis ended up stealing the corn and what they're trying to do with it. But if you do end up playing this game, I'll leave that as a little secret that you can discover for yourself and see if you catch on to the design behind the locales. Now, the game not only borrows on the storyline, it also borrows heavily on the mechanics. In every stage, you'll be collecting corn. You collect 100 corn, you get a life. There will also be three hidden totem parts in each stage. If you collect all the totems in one peculiar overworld, well, you'll unlock a bonus stage. Lastly, however, a slightly original mechanic is that each stage is almost a time trial because at the end of the stage, you'll be accorded a star rating based on how fast you finish the stage. And these time trials are automatically built into each stage during even your first playthrough. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not ragging on the game for its inspiration. I have no problem with it being inspired by Donkey Kong Country. I'm just letting you know how close it actually is to the base mechanics behind that series. Now, the way Tuki himself controls will also feel very familiar. Basically, he has two different movement mechanics. He has a jump mechanic, which can translate to a double jump. And secondly, using the B button, he has a slam mechanic, which will send him slamming down towards the ground. Now, your basic way of dealing with most enemies will be jumping on their heads, but that slam mechanic will be needed for some of the tougher enemies. Now, overall, the controls feel really nice and responsive, although a slightly a little bit more floaty than its inspiration Donkey Kong Country. However, I wouldn't say that is a negative thing because it adds a very interesting type of mechanic in the game, making acrobatics jumping from one enemy to another very, very easy during the game. And the controls being very responsive is a key element of this. In certain stages, I actually managed to bounce from over five or six enemies without ever, ever touching the ground. Also, performance-wise, this game is very smooth. It has a very constant frame rate, and that is the same whether you're playing in dock mode or in handheld mode. So that is a very positive aspect for this game. Animations on Tuki himself are very vibrant and smooth, just the same for each one of the enemies that you'll encounter. And I would say that for a game of this length, there is a very decent variety of enemies as well. Now, lastly, the environments are lush and beautiful, and I would say are once again animated and drawn extremely well. So with all the praise I'm throwing this game's way, I guess you're wondering if this is maybe a new hidden gem. Unfortunately, I wouldn't say it quite makes it to that point because there are a few things that are holding this game back. Number one, I would say, is the length of an average playthrough for this game I think will disappoint most people. I managed to blast through this game in under three hours of gameplay. And even in that three hours of gameplay, I already had collected almost 75 of the 81 totem pieces in the stages, and I had three starred, I would say, about 30% of the overall stages. Why am I going into details like that? Well, just to explain to you that even if someone were to probably backtrack and want to collect all the missing totem pieces and try to three star all the stages, an experienced gamer, I would think, would get maybe an extra couple of hours out of the game. 
Now, the rapid play of this game, I don't think is mainly due to the content of the game itself, because overall, it has 30 stages divided over three different biomes with three different boss fights as well included, which for a $13 game does feel like a decent amount of content. However, the actual difficulty of the stages is why the game plays out so quick. Because yes, the game is set up sort of almost like a time trial exercise. And because the average difficulty level of the game is so low, an experienced gamer, like I said, will blast through each stage between three to four minutes. Now, I have said the word experienced gamer over and over, however, in this explanation, and I'll get to that just a little bit later. But ultimately, that was my first issue with the game, is that although the difficulty level does ultimately creep up slightly from the beginning to the end, it never reaches that apex point where I would call the game challenging. Another downside of the game are the actual boss fights, in my opinion. Now, the designs and the actual mechanics of the bosses themselves aren't actually that bad. I would rather say that it's the pace at which they're implemented. They follow the same design ultimately once again as the Donkey Kong Country bosses. Each boss will send a variety of obstacles at you in three different phases generally, and in between each phase, eventually the boss's weak point will be exposed and you'll have a set amount of time to exploit that weakness. The thing is that in Donkey Kong Country, the boss fights are set up with a pace that actually sets a certain urgency to the fight. In Stitchy, unfortunately, that urgency isn't really present in at least two out of the three boss fights, and it really feels like you're just playing a waiting game till that weakness exposes, but there really isn't any challenge or urgency to the fight at all. The only boss that I actually felt had a decent pace was the final boss in the game. Now, I'm not going to ruin the mechanics behind that uh, boss because I want it to be an experience if you do end up purchasing this game. So if you could take the design and the urgency that that last boss created and set it as the first boss of the game, because it was a little bit too easy as a final boss of the game, in my opinion, and then creep up the difficulty in the other two bosses, but keeping that same pace of urgency to the fights, you would have actually had a much better setup. But now, are these issues game breaking? What I mean by that is that does this make the game not worth it? The game, in my opinion, definitely remains a worthwhile experience. Just maybe not for a very experienced platform player, unless you really, really just want a very laid back and easy experience and just to have a few hours of fun. Ultimately, I didn't feel like I didn't have fun with this game. I just really wasn't challenged in any way. I did, however, do a special test for this game that I don't normally do and that maybe not every reviewer out there has access to. I have a young eight year old that has just gotten into gaming. She's eight years old and she's been gaming for about a year. I know you might find that crazy because some eight year olds are already very vast gamers, but my girls are just not into gaming all that much. And well, I sat her down and I had her play Stitchy a little bit. And you know what? For her, Stitchy actually had a decent level of difficulty. What that means is that someone who is new to platformers or just a younger gamer, Stitchy actually has a very decent progression system to it and ultimately never gets to that point where she would get disappointed in the game and stop playing. Let's be honest, most eight year olds or most people that are new to platformers that play one of the last editions of the Donkey Kong Country series might have never seen the end of the game because of how difficult it gets. And ultimately, I would say that Stitchy when you look at it as a whole, is actually not that bad. It actually does resemble slightly the progression you get in the first three biomes of a Donkey Kong Country game. Because let's be honest, the first two or three overworlds in Donkey Kong Country are generally not all that challenging. The challenge starts to creep up on you generally in those last three to four biomes. The only problem with Stitchy is the game ends before that ultimate difficulty really creeps up and gets to an apex level. So now with all that out of the way, what is my verdict for Stitchy in Tuki Trouble? Well, if this is the first time you're watching one of my reviews, I don't give a numerical score. I give an overall statement on whether or not I suggest purchasing the game. If you want to see what all those statements that I use are, look down below in the description. They're all in the description of the video. 
and ultimately I'm going to be giving Stitchy and Tookie Trouble a solid game. Number one, I'm not going to discredit a game because it is not aimed at an audience that is experienced in platformers. Ultimately, Stitchy and Tookie Trouble, I think, does accomplish what it sets out to accomplish. It's just not aimed at an audience that wants a very difficult platformer. If you really set yourself to want to three star all the levels, there still is a slight challenge to some of them. And overall, that's also why the game won't be scoring any higher. Because as the way I do my rating system, if it would be a definite pickup, it would have to respond to a vast range of gamers. And I just don't think that a very experienced gamer who's looking for a challenging experience is going to be happy with what he gets in Stitchy. As a final note, I would note that this is maybe also a game that I would wait for a sale to pick up. Currently, it's on sale for 25% off around $9 instead of $12.99. But ultimately, I would maybe wait till this game will be 50% on sale or more, then I would say it feels just just right for what you're getting. So that was pretty much it for my review of Stitchy in Tookie Trouble. As usual, as I said at the beginning of the video, don't forget that if you do like this content and you want to see more, please do hit that like button. It's the best way to support the channel. Also, subscribe if you aren't already, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when all my future videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.